Oh, good. For once, you brutes managed to escort a prisoner to me without too many visible bruises. Color me impressed. Set her down right there. You may unshackle her wrists. I doubt some scruffy sea urchin poses much threat to me, even with her hands free. Good. You're dismissed, both of you. Leave us alone together. Did you not hear me? I said, leave us. I trust you don't need reminding how much your emperor hates having to repeat himself. <sighs> Permit me to sincerely apologize for any rough treatment you may have received at the hands of my underlings. My palace guard is hardly staffed by the brightest or gentlest creatures. I know, but... They're quite effective at knocking heads together, so I keep them around. But help is so hard to find. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I suppose I shouldn't ask you. You don't look like the sort of person who's ever had a servant. In any case, let's proceed to the reason I summoned you here, to my chambers. Who are you, and what brings you to my domain? Your emperor just asked you a question. If you know what's good for you, you'll answer quickly and truthfully. I am known for many traits, but patience has never been one of them. Who are you? Hmm, a strange name. You're from someplace far, far away, aren't you? I suspected as much. They tell me you came here stowed away on a whaling ship. They tell me they found you hidden below decks, huddled inside a filthy crate, skulking in the shadows like a rat. Is that true? Are you a rat? Really, are you quite certain of that? Because you don't look much like a person to me, let alone a woman. You look like a frightened little animal, cowering here in front of me, afraid to so much as meet the eyes of a man. She consents instinctively, is in every possible respect her superior. <laughs> Do you know, it was my idiotic advisors who counseled me to have you hauled in here from the dungeon for questioning. They were convinced you were a spy in the service of our adversaries. As if anyone would be fool enough to entrust such a delicate role to some timid cretin like yourself. Oh, don't think I don't see that witness growing in your eyes. Have my words pricked your pride? Have I wounded you? Perhaps you feel as though I'm being needlessly cruel. That I should be more charitable with you. Seen as you're my guest. <laughs> well, that's precisely the problem, isn't it? You're not my guest. You're an intruder. An interloper who snuck her way into my empire like a thief in the night. Quite uninvited. You're only receiving the degree of courtesy which befits such a person. Yes. You heard me correctly. My empire. Surely you recognize my face, no? Think hard. Is it familiar? Have you seen this stately visage before? Perhaps rendered not in flesh, but in stone or white marble or oil paint on one of the majestic statues or portraits or tapestries lining the walls of this palace? Why? There are so many of them. You must have glimpsed one or two as they marched you down the halls. I suppose I can't entirely fault you for not seeing the resemblance sooner. Talented as the many artisans under my patronage are, no artwork in the world could do justice to the real thing. I suppose it would be rather impolite now that you've introduced yourself, for me to not return the courtesy. I am the Emperor Sanguine, sovereign and supreme ruler of this realm. All that you have seen since you have arrived on these shores, every regal bolstrade and balcony, every lustrous jewel and gemstone, every common man and mouse, 
belongs to me. And that includes yourself. My, my, there is something very amusing about the way you're looking at me. Your eyes burn with fear and confusion. Those emotions I see all the time in the eyes of my subjects. But in your gaze, they're mixed with something else. What is it, I wonder? Some unspoken earnestness? Perhaps a latent, involuntary sense of gratitude. That someone is as radiant and beautiful as myself is so much as glancing in your direction. Let alone speaking to you. That some inconsequential little ragamuffin like you, somehow, some way, through some fickle twist of fate, ended up slouched at the feet of an emperor. Or is it desire? Look at you, squirm. <laughs> Do I make you uncomfortable? Not enough to force you to mask your emotions, apparently. Or do you simply lack the self-control to do so? You know how serious your predicament is. You know very well that I could snap my fingers, should I even have the slightest inclination, and have you locked away in some deep, dark, tiny hole for the rest of your days. Still, you just can't help it. Your infatuation with me is written all over your face. You're love-struck. <laughs> Don't worry. I have a weakness for flattery. One of my admitted vices. And I will confess to being a touch flattered. What's more, you've got me in an unusually generous mood. So, I'm more inclined to forgive your impudence. That is if you play your part to my satisfaction. Get up, on your feet. Follow me into the foyer. Sit down in that lounge chair. Yes. Yes, you have my permission. Go on. Oh, was that a little whine I heard? Is it really so comfortable? <laughs> Don't answer that. Of course it is. It's plush velvet. Probably the softest, coziest thing you'll ever sit on. Certainly, I'll bet. It's infinitely more comfortable than the cold, rough, cobbled floor of the dungeon. Let me take a seat next to you. Oh, is that a problem for you? I know it's not a very large chair, but... It was only built for one, after all. I'm so close to you. Why? My body is practically pressing into you. Are you feeling uncomfortable? No. That's the right answer. Of course you aren't. Good girl. You know... I was initially planning to bring you up here for a quick chat to appease my advisors and then throw you back down there. But now, against my better judgment, I'm beginning to think I'd like to get to know you better. There's just something about your demeanor I can't help but be fond of. Even when that demeanor manifests in such a small and pitiful vessel, would you like to share a meal with your emperor? You look unsure, as though you're wondering if this is all some elaborate trick. <laughs> it's awfully cute, I'll concede that. But no tricks, no traps. My offer is perfectly genuine. Though, of course, no one's forcing you to accept. It's entirely your choice. If you prefer, I can always just call for my men and have them escort you back to that little cell I dragged you out of, and you can dine on whatever maggot-ridden gruel they feed you down there instead. That's what a rat would choose, I suppose, dining on dirty scraps in the dark. But you said you weren't a rat, right? That 
that's what I thought. But that's not what you need to say. Yes, what? You say, yes, emperor. And try not to stammer next time. Good girl. You're a quick learner. You might just have your uses after all. Here. You may finish what remains on that plate. You interrupted me in the middle of my dinner. So there's a fair bit left to eat. Oh no. No. Don't apologize, darling. Though... I do appreciate the impulse. That servile tone suits you. <laughs> I'm glad I had brought you here, truth be told. I was dreadfully bored before, but now I have a new plaything, and that's always a delight. Oh, what's that bashful look? Do you not like being called a plaything? Or are you just too shy to admit that you do like it? Either way, you'd do well to get accustomed to the title. It's simply the truth. I don't know what backwater you crawled out of, nor do I care. But you're in my world now. And everyone here is my plaything. It's only that some are more treasured than others. However, that need not be a bad thing. I treat my pets well as long as they play their little roles and keep me entertained. You only have cause to be worried if you disobey. I confess, I have a bad habit of breaking my toys when they fail to amuse me. Oh, but I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I can see I'm putting you off from your dinner. Don't be frightened. There's nothing to fear as long as you do as I say. Go on. Take a bite. You'll love it. I promise. It's Bray's sunfish with a lemon and clover. Only the freshest, juiciest catch from the fishmonger's morning harvest prepared painstakingly by my personal chefs. That particular specimen would fetch a pretty penny at the market. <laughs> Come to think of it, it's probably worth a great deal more than any food you've ever eaten. But here you are enjoying it free of charge, as my treat. There are benefits to sharing the company of the emperor. If you serve me well, you'll come to learn that soon enough. Actually, don't use that fork. Put it down. You probably don't even know how to hold it properly. I doubt someone like you has ever even taken any classes in etiquette, after all. Here, let me put my arm around you and bring you in close. I'll feed you. Open your mouth. Do I look as though I'm not being serious? Ask me such a stupid question again and I won't be so forgiving. I said, open your mouth. And there we are. Here comes the first bite. Oh, you look so adorable. My pet, eating my food. From my fork, in my parlor. Close your mouth when you chew, darling. You'll use good manners when you eat at my table if you don't want to eat your next meal off the floor. Oh, it is so tasty, isn't it? Better than you've had in a long while, I know. Here, let me feed you another. Open your mouth again. It's just delightful watching your expression while you eat. You're so hungry. I can tell you'd love nothing more than to tear into that sunfish with both hands and scarf it all down like a rabid animal. But you won't. Because you know you have to be a good girl for me. And that means 
while you're here, you won't behave like an animal. Unless, of course, I decide I want you to. <laughs> Do you like me rubbing your back with my other hand? Here, lean in closer. We don't want you to spill anything. Have another bite. Do you need something to drink? You must be parched. Have some white wine. I could tell you how rare and expensive this vintage is, but... Who are we kidding? Someone like you would hardly know the difference. Instead, I'll only promise it'll slake your thirst. Ever sipped wine from a crystal goblet before? <laughs> you don't have to answer that, darling. Let me just raise it to your lips. Drink as much as you'd like. The whole thing if you'd want to. The wine should loosen you up a little too. Take care of that trembling in your hands. Don't think I didn't notice that. <laughs> your emperor notices everything. Thirsty, aren't you? Ooh, oh. Careful. Don't let it dribble down your chin. Let me clean you up. Oh, clumsy girl. You've stained your shirt. Well, it's not like it was in a very presentable condition to begin with. We'll need to get you something else to wear. And before that, we'll need to have you bathed. No, no. Don't fuss now. You're doing so well. Don't worry. I'll allow you to finish your dinner first. Open your mouth. Here comes another bite. Good girl. Oh, I can tell. You're special. You're so eager to please. If only so, it'll earn you more fine silks to recline on and tantalizing food to eat. But that's not all you like, is it? You like attention from me, too, don't you? You like it when I rub your back. And your hair. When I stroke your cheek. Don't bother being shy and looking away. Your face tells me at a glance all I need to know. You need not be embarrassed. You're hardly the one who yearns for my company. That list. Numbers far, too many to ever put to paper. You are, however, one of the rare few to receive that pleasure. I only hope you're capable of appreciating how lucky you are that I've taken an interest in you. Perfect answer. Yes, Emperor, indeed. You are a quick learner. But until now I was debating in my mind, but I think I've made my decision. I'm going to keep you. You're going to be my new project. Do you know what that means? Of course not. You don't know anything yet. It means I'm going to fill that empty head of yours with so many wonderful things. And if you behave, and please me, maybe I'll fill your hands with a thing or two as well. It means I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to have you cleaned up and made prim and proper. And you are going to learn to serve me, just as I want to be served. Yeah, don't speak. Just have another bite. Actually, you'll eat it directly from my hand this time. Oh, you look a bit uncertain. Are you reluctant to eat from my fingers? No, of course you're not. There you go. Eat it all. Good. Consider this a microcosm of our future relationship. I'll hold you close and feed you the most extravagant traits. And in exchange, you'll be good and loyal, and obedient. Does that sound like a fair trade? 
Oh, come now, that didn't quite sound enthusiastic enough. Convince me. You know, if you won't provide me sufficient cause to be sure of your loyalties, I might just be forced to reevaluate whether or not you're a spy after all. And then... <laughs> oh, relax, calm down. You should hear that shrill desperation in your voice. That's absolutely adorable. I'll have to make you beg more often. But I'm only playing with you, pet. Don't worry yourself. You're safe with me. I know you'll be loyal. I can tell already. Here, have another bite. Oh my. It's grown quite late, hasn't it? After you finish your dinner, we'll retire. Yes, I said we. You didn't think I'd be cruel enough to send you to sleep down in that cell again, did you? No. That's no place for my loyal servant. And that's what you are, isn't it? You'll find your rest here in my chambers. Yes. Now here, another treat is waiting for you in the Emperor's hand. Good girl. I have so many delightful things in store for you. Ah, there you are. Right in your chair where you belong. Good girl. I confess, I feared that you might succumb to your baser instincts and started prowling about after I left you alone. How disappointing it would have been to have to punish you after all the affection I lavished on you earlier. But don't fret. No need for that worried look. You proved you could behave even when left to your own devices. So there's no cause for disciplining you. In fact, quite the contrary. I think your good behavior merits a reward. Would you like a reward, my pet? Of course you would. And you'll have one. All in due time. But first, there are a few errands we'll have to see to. I already explained that I'd have to have you washed and dressed properly before we retire to bed. Your current attire is hardly appropriate for my servants' quarters let alone my intimate chambers. You won't make a fuss about being washed, will you? Excellent. That's precisely what I desire to hear from you. Yes, Emperor. <laughs> I particularly love that little mewling, whining tone your voice takes on when you reply to me. It's so very appropriate for your station. You have the makings of an immensely promising pet. And I do not say that lightly. Follow me now. I'll show you to the baths. I've had one of my maid girls run a nice hot bath for you. I specifically instructed her to pour in a generous measure of lavender bath soap. That's the source of all those pretty little bubbles you see foaming at the water's surface. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Isn't the aroma positively intoxicating? Would you believe me if I told you that I routinely have a very particular variant of lavender shipped in at a great expense from one of my colonies across the vast ocean, solely so that it may be distilled into the soap? Sailors risk hundreds of leagues of sea and storm just to ferry it to my palace. Imagine all that sweat and blood and salt expended simply to make your bath maximally pleasurable. Oh, pet, how sweet of you to say, but you don't have to thank me. It's only the natural order of things. My empire is a great and sprawling machine, and the single function of that machine is to serve my ambitions, my desires. Not least of those desires is that I, and my pets, and consorts, should want for no earthly luxury. Should you prove yourself and take a more permanent place by my side, you will 
quickly find that there is no material expense I will spare to see to the satisfaction of those I hold closest. Why, this room itself is testament enough to that. <laughs> layer on layer of marble and ivory and glittering gold filigree. It's like something out of one of those old storybooks about a pretty princess who lives in an impossibly splendid castle by the sea. I wonder, standing here now, do you feel like a princess? <laughs> oh, you look like you're thinking so very hard about how to answer that in a way I approve of. Adorable. <laughs> Don't worry, pet. It's only a little joke. Is your emperor not permitted a sense of humor? In any case, please, stop gawking and remove your clothes. Well, what are you waiting for? Did I not make clear that when I issue an instruction, I expect... Wait. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Shh. Shh, no need to explain. I see now by that flustered expression, those fidgeting hands, what's really happening here. You didn't mean to disobey me. It's just that pesky pride of yours rearing its ugly head again. Here, come closer. Lift your head up and meet my eyes. You're shy, aren't you, pet? You're too proud to disrobe in front of me. <laughs> Don't be afraid. You aren't in trouble. In the long run, I'd probably be wise to train that bashfulness out of you, but... I confess, some part of me does find it ever so cute. And you are new. So, I'll tell you what. I'll permit it. For tonight, at least. Here, let me turn you around and offer you your privacy for a moment. But, this time, I expect you to obey. Now, take off your clothes and get in the bath. Good girl. Oh no, don't shrink away from me. <laughs> don't fret. Don't try to cover yourself. I promise no one can see a thing beneath all those bubbles. See? Your emperor isn't such a cruel master, is he? <laughs> I'm not unwilling to indulge your little insecurities if I must. I don't even mind so much as long as... They don't keep you from playing your role. Is that a little sigh I heard just now? Lowborn folk always melt at the slightest taste of luxury. It's really very endearing. Don't try to stifle it. I want to hear every little murmur you make. Close your eyes and let that warm water envelop you and sweep all your cares right off your shoulders. It looks so comfortable. I'm almost tempted to join you in there. <laughs> what do they bathe in wherever you're from, I wonder? Some tin basin full of stale dishwater? Do they even bathe at all? <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Raise those arms so I can begin scrubbing them. What's that look of surprise? You... Didn't think I'd just leave you alone to bathe yourself. <laughs> Whatever put such a silly notion in your head? Let me ask you a question. And think hard before you answer. If you took a mangy stray dog into your house from out of the rain, would you leave her to bathe herself? No. Why not? Good girl. Exactly right. Because she doesn't know how to do it properly. She'd only make a mess. Now, raise your arms. I'll just scrub ever so gently with this sponge. It is a pleasant sensation, isn't it? Your little purrs say more than words ever could. See, you would have splashed and thrashed around like the rough creature you are. You don't know the first thing about using a gentle touch. But that's alright. That's why I'm here. A 
and down. Slow strokes. You may close your eyes again if you'd like. Now, for your hair. Let me rub a little soap into your scalp and work up a nice lather. There. Doesn't that feel nice? Have you ever washed your hair with soap before? Do you wash it at all? <laughs> Frankly, I think I can summarize the answer from the state of it. We'll have to bring my barber in to see to that sometime. But one problem at a time. Can't turn a scruffy little rat into a lady all in one fell swoop. It has to be done bit by bit. Every little filthy inch scrubbed squeaky clean. One at a time. What was that? What did you say? Don't lie to me. Don't ever lie to your emperor. You said something just a moment ago. Under your breath. Ever so softly. But I heard it all the same. What was it? I will give you one last chance to tell me of your own volition. That's what I thought you said. I obviously gave you too much credit earlier if you're still willing to talk back to me. That beastly instinct of yours was still there, just below the veneer of obedience. How disappointing. Oh, you weren't talking back to me? Listen to that desperate little wail creep back into your voice. It's like you know how great a misstep you made and would do absolutely anything to take your words back. But it's too late. I heard quite clearly what you said. I'm not a rat. That's what you said, isn't it? Answer me. Yes, it is. You do not ever show such impertinence to me. Is that clear? Evidently it isn't. Lift your head up. Look into my eyes when I speak to you. You are whatever I say you are. And you do well to remember that before so flippantly contradicting your benefactor. Don't let the fine food in your belly and my hands threading through your hair give you delusions of grandeur. You are a rat. A pathetic, dirty rat from some nameless gutter that your emperor, out of the kindness of his own heart, has taken pity on and decided to take under his wing. And you repay that kindness with insolence. Oh, does that hurt? Is it painful when I pull your hair back like that? Good. Go ahead. Let those tears roll down your cheek. Cry, whimper, make whatever vulgar noise comes naturally to you. I don't care. You will learn your place here one way or another. And that won't always be a pleasant process. To think that I was feeling charitable enough to wash you myself instead of delegating the task to one of my maid girls. Only for you to go and ruin it all with your brutish behavior. Go on and finish cleaning yourself as best you can. You're hardly capable of anything resembling a thorough job, but you've exhausted my patience. I'll be waiting in my bedchamber when you're finished. Then I'll decide what to do with you. You spent an awfully long time in that bath after I left. I was growing worried. I see you slipped into those silk night clothes I left for you. You look very dashing in them. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see by the dim candle light, but I procured a set for you that matches my own nightgown. Isn't that sweet? Oh no, please don't shy away. I'm not angry with you anymore. I promise. Come over here and join me, please. Here, you have my permission to lie down on my bed beside me. Shh, shh, no need for all those stammered words. I know you must be so eager to apologize, but you can calm down. It's all right. I've had time to reflect. And I realize I was much too harsh with you before. Oh, poor thing. He 
you flinched when I reached out to touch you just now. You're afraid. Afraid I'll hurt you again. I won't hurt you. I promise. Let me just put my arms around you and bring you in close. I want to speak to you about what happened in the bath. Emperor was so proud of you for behaving so well and for learning your manner so quickly. And when you made that little remark, he just lost his composure. He thought you were being a brat after all the hard work he put into helping you. But you're not a brat, are you? You're a good girl. Yes, you are. I understand now that you didn't mean to talk back and upset me, pet. You were only defending yourself from what sounded like a cruel jab. But though my anger has faded, the lesson remains. Do you know what that lesson is? I know you're frightened, darling, but please try not to stammer. It's so hard to understand you when you do. What it help to soothe your nerves if I ran my hand through your hair. You seem to so enjoy that before. The lesson you will need to learn is that when I tell you something, even something about yourself you don't think is true, you do not argue. Try to understand. I don't tell you these things to hurt or humiliate you. I tell them to reveal to you the disparity between what you are and what you need to become. I speak with love, and always for your own good, even if my words seem cruel. Does that make sense? You're still frightened. You're trembling and you look as though you're on the verge of tears. Poor thing. Let me hold you tighter. Will that make you feel more secure? Hmm. I can only imagine how you felt cowering in your bathwater after I left. Terrified you displeased me and it was only a matter of time until I came to strip away all these pretty things I've given you and cast you back to the depths of the dungeon like a discarded toy. But I won't do that, my sweet. I promise. You're safe here, with me. You'll spend the night sharing my soft, inviting bed. Let me pull the covers over you and let you get all snug and warm. Doesn't that feel cozy? Here, maybe this will help you take your mind off things. I promised you a treat for being a good girl earlier, and and I haven't changed my mind about that. In fact... I think you need reassurance of my affection for you now more than ever. Turn your head and look into my eyes. My, my. Our faces are so close together. I quite like that. I want you to kiss me. You heard me correctly. Surely you didn't think my favorite plaything spent all day lounging around nibbling on expensive fish and taking bubble baths, did you? <laughs> oh, of course there's plenty of that to be had. Don't misunderstand me. But what I treasure most from my toys is their companionship. I want to mold you into my ideal confidant, keeper of my nightly whispered secrets. My source of comfort and affection after a strenuous day of statecraft and war and intrigue. Even, perhaps, if you prove to be a very good girl. My lover. Oh, I wish you could see your eyes right now. They're white as saucers. From that look of shock, you'd think I had just told you you were going to be executed tomorrow. <laughs> Fret not, pet. That's all a matter for the days to come. We need not discuss your future responsibilities. I promise I won't press any of that on you before you're ready. All I offer tonight is a little kiss, nothing more. I hope my embrace has calmed your nerves a bit. Here, I'll guide you. Don't worry. Just close your eyes, lean forward, and... You're a little clumsy. I don't 
don't suppose that you've had any great deal of experience. But that's no worry. You're eager to please, and that's all I need. You'll learn. Let me cup your cheek with my hand. Next time, tilt your head a bit to the side. When our lips meet, don't be afraid to press closer. You won't hurt me. Mmm, that was delicious. Good girl. Your lips are so soft, and your mouth is so warm and wet and alluring. I almost couldn't bring myself to part from you. <laughs> Tell me, what does it feel like to kiss an emperor? Blissful? God, let me impress. That was a perfect response. Good girl. Do you know what the word means, or did you merely pick it up from me? Oh, never mind. I don't care. You're doing so well, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry that I doubted you. And I'm sorry I was so callous with you before. You just needed a little time and patience, that's all. Kiss me again. Rest your head in my arms. Let me cradle you. You are my perfect little pet. I can see that now. And you'll grow to see it too. In the coming days as we train you and prepare you for all that will be required of you. You'll see that wretched little creature that arrived on my shores fade away. And be replaced by something warm. And soft. And beautiful. A proper regal pet fit to sit at the side of an emperor. But I can all wait until tomorrow. For now, just nestle close and close your eyes. Sweet dreams, darling. Mmm, a good long bath always does wonders to cool my temper after a particularly strenuous day. Ah, and I see you Vulcan, pet. Excellent. I might have asked you to join me as I bathed, but I didn't wish to rouse you. You always look so perfectly serene when you slumber, your little chest rising and falling ever so slightly. But wild dreams make their way into that little head of yours when you sleep. I wonder. I think I can imagine. <laughs> My apologies for returning to our bedchamber at such a late hour. I hope I didn't give you cause to worry. Today's proceedings unfortunately dragged on an excessively long time. But they're finished at last, and your emperor is ready to join you for bedtime. Go on, move over a little and make room for me. Good girl. Here. Allow me to reward my pet's obedience with a little kiss on the forehead. Yes, let me wrap my arms around you and draw you in. Just like that. Mm. Cuddling you is such a pleasure. I've been yearning for this feeling all day. You simply can't imagine how torturous it was for me today. Having to sit on the throne, wrapped up in all that stuffy finery, and suffer through hour upon hour of tedious diplomatic roundtables, when I wanted nothing more than to slip into this nightgown and slink back to my chambers, these velvet sheets, and my favorite pet's loving embrace. Alas, all of us have our responsibilities to attend to, your emperor, most of all. Oh, I appreciate your polite interest in the details of my day, pet. But don't fret over it. It's none of your concern. The minutiae of all that complicated statecraft and negotiation would only bore you. You'd never be able to wrap your little mind around such intricate matters. And besides, the business of my court is often quite serious. I fear it'd be too much for a soft, sensitive little thing like you to hear about. Oh, no, don't look so disappointed. <laughs> oh, 
How can I say no to that little pout and those irresistibly cute puppy eyes? Very well. If you're truly so curious, I'll indulge you. Today's meetings were between myself and a certain high lord from the east. This lord has been quite vocal in his belief that the crown's new slate of taxes on naval imports are very unjust, and he has come to the imperial court to demand certain concessions. If I don't submit to these demands, he's threatened a blockade of our eastern ports. He mistakenly believes that his possession of a few godforsaken spits of barren rock and a decrepit castle or two gives him adequate leverage to demand anything of me. <laughs> oh, I only wish that I could be in attendance when the royal fleet encircles all his pathetic worm-eaten little ships like a great iron fist and smashes them all to splinters in a hail of cannon fire. Like most nobles, He's a very proud man. He wore the most infuriatingly arrogant little smirk during our negotiations this morning. As though he really believed he had the upper hand, it would be nothing short of a privilege to be present to see that smirk melt into cold despair as he watches his livelihood burn and sink into the harbor as it dawns on him far too late that he should not have tempted the wrath of his emperor. In my mind, I can already hear those wails, those shrill pleas for mercy and clemency. <laughs> Delectable. Proud men never stay proud to the end. Did you know that, pet? That's something I've been taught quite well by all the poor fools I've had to bend and break over the course of my tenure as the emperor. Sure, they put up a nice facade of bravery, but like all the rest, they're soft and squishy and vulnerable on the inside. Let's you crack them open. Even the proudest men fall to their knees and whimper and beg like animals once they've seen the reaper's sickle on the horizon. I prefer honest men. And honest girls, too. Girls who forget the delusion of pride from the start. Good girls like you who know their place. Who don't try in vain to puff themselves up to seem big and strong and brave. When they know they're small and weak and cowardly. Oh no. I'm sorry, Pat. I can see by that wetness in your pretty eyes and your quivering lip. That I'm only frightening you with my passion. My ferocity. No. Oh. I told you all that serious talk would be too much for you to handle. I'm sorry I scared you. Here, no more of that. Just nestle into my arms. Let me run my fingers through your hair and soothe you. You may cry if you're feeling too overwhelmed. I don't mind. I've grown quite fond of your soft heart and how easily you're moved to tears when you're scared or confused. You need not be embarrassed. It's quite endearing how tender you are. Let's change the subject to my favorite little subject. <laughs> Tell me about your day. What was my darling pet up to while her master was away, I wonder? Nothing naughty, I hope. <laughs> oh, no. No, don't worry. I was only being playful. I know you're much too loyal and will behave to do anything I wouldn't approve of. You're a good girl. Isn't that right? Of course you are. That's why your emperor loves you. Oh. If only all the rebellious little worms spoiling my big beautiful world could be as demure and soft and pliable as you. Maybe my crown wouldn't be quite so heavy a weight to bear sometimes, but having you around to be affectionate with in the late hours of the day makes dealing with all of that rabble each morning so much easier. There, nuzzle into my neck. Mm. I 
know you would never betray me. It's true that you aren't a product of one of those fancy academies that spawned all those worthless lords and ladies who cluttered up my court. But nonetheless, you somehow know one thing they never truly learned. You know that all you have, your food, and your bed, and your clothes, and your life, you owe to your emperor's generosity. And you see, likewise, that all that he has so magnanimously given you, he can strip away just as easily. Isn't that right? I do so enjoy that mewling whine in your voice when you say yes, Emperor. As though you're frightened you'll upset me. And earn a punishment if you don't agree with me meekly enough. <laughs> so keen to be submissive. But how could you be any other way? I raised you up from nothing after all, didn't I? Plucked you from the gutter and put the most savory foods in your mouth, dripped the most luxurious clothes around your shoulders, lavished on you my warmest affections. You'd have to be the most ungrateful sort of creature to be anything but perfectly servile when speaking to the man who handed you the world on a silver platter. How fortunate for us both that you're a good girl instead. Hmm, I can feel your heart beating fast through your chest. It always quickens its pace when we lie together, doesn't it? It's admittedly flattering, the effect hearing my teasing words and being close to me clearly has on you. You're so completely, unashamedly in love with me. It's adorable. You may place your hand on my chest. I want you to feel something. Do you feel the beating of my heart? You ought to feel it distinctly. Oh, there's that shy look again. Did you not realize that a little measure of thin silk was all that separated our bodies? No, no. Don't take your hand away. When I give you permission to touch me, you need not be reluctant. If it helps. Remember that being affectionate with me is as much of a duty as it is a privilege. And I need not remind you what I expect when I order you to do your duty. Speaking of your duties and privileges, I've been meaning to commend you on your progress with our little kissing lessons. <laughs> you are so experienced to start off, but you're becoming quite a natural. I don't need to tell you that's high praise coming from someone with lips as discerning as my own. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to continue your instruction and teach you a new trick. Oh, shh, shh, no need to speak. I can tell you're nervous. I told you, none of your little fits and fidgets escape your emperor's notice, didn't I? It's quite alright. I know very well how prone to anxiety my good girl is. Don't fret. You're safe as long as you listen and obey. Let me guide you. Here, I'll cup your cheek. Do you like the feeling of my warm hand on your face? It's fresh from my bath and ever so soft. I know. If you inhale, you can still smell the lavender. Let me bring your head up. Tilt it a little to the side. And... Mm, exquisite. I've been hungering for your lips pressed against mine all day. Another. Perfect. I almost can't bear to part from that warm, inviting mouth of yours, but... I'd hardly be a very good teacher if I skipped over the crux of the lesson. <laughs> now, allow me to demonstrate the proper technique. Mm. Did you feel me press my way onto your mouth and take claim over what's mine? <laughs> I 
Everything in this world is about power, you know, in one way or another. Even matters of the bedroom. Especially matters of the bedroom, if we're being perfectly honest. <laughs> but one of the more enjoyable aspects of wielding great powers is allowing those beneath you to play at wielding it as well. Even if it's only play. So, you have my permission, pet. I will kiss you again. And when I do, do just as I do. Excellent. You're a quick learner with kissing as you are with everything else. Color me impressed. But my star pupil isn't finished yet. Practice makes perfect, as they say. Think of me as a fearsome lion playing with a poor, helpless, lost lamb. Though my prey might put up a pitiful fight in my mouth, nothing you do can ever truly threaten me. When my little lamb plays aggressive... It merely makes devouring her all the more amusing. <laughs> mm. Good girl. For sweet, frail little lamb, you do have more than a bit of vigor in you after all. I love the way you stroked my shoulders just now. Your touch is still clumsy and unpracticed, but nevertheless, those eager fingers feel divine caressing my skin like that. How did a rough little beast like you come to possess such soft fingers? I think I can find one or two other excellent uses for them. <laughs> but perhaps another night. One lesson at a time. Oh, that was perfect. I need a break. I don't want to spoil my enjoyment by gorging myself on this delicious meal or sharing together too quickly. I only hope my good girl enjoyed her lesson as much as her emperor did. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear that, pet. Your honeyed words make even a mighty lion feel a little tender inside. Here, come press in close to me. Let me cradle you. Mm. Good girl. You're doing ever so well in your new role. I hope you realize that. I can't believe it was only a short while ago that you were just another unremarkable good rat. And now, look at you, my prized pet. You've come so far, though you still have a long way to go. My, our little lesson has wet my thirst. Would you like a drink as well? I saved a little something for us to share. Let me ring for one of my servant girls. You there, girl. There's an ice box in the foyer. Bring me the bottle inside and a pair of glasses. Quickly now. What are you gawking at? I gave you an instruction, girl. Are you new? Do you not know where the foyer is? Oh, you're looking at my bedmate. Don't lie to your emperor. You were looking at her. If you'd like to keep your position, I'd advise you to stop looking at her like that. She is my companion, and she's thus none of your concern. Do I make myself clear? Excellent. Apology accepted, darling. Don't make me wait any longer. Good girl. You're dismissed. Oh, you'll love this wine. I had it brought up from the cellars just for us. Let me sit up a moment and pour you a glass. Mm, there we go. A generous serving for my favorite plaything. As a reward for scoring such brilliant marks in her lesson today. <laughs> oh, a servant girl? Don't mind her. She must be new and unacclimated to my usual standards of decorum. I hope her staring at you in the state didn't upset you, sweet girl. I know how sensitive you are. Perhaps you're too shy to bear the thought of a stranger seeing us entangled in one another's arms? <laughs> Adorable. Oh, could you really not tell? <laughs> Your inexperience continues to amuse. That was interest she was looking at you with. My servant girls are expressly forbidden from entertaining relationships because of certain past incidents. 
As a result, most of them are sadly more than a bit lonely, and I don't often invite non-aristocratic female company. So, when she saw you lying there in my arms, freshly washed and dressed in that dashing silk and cast in flattering candlelight, I suppose you seemed a little enticing to her. <laughs> my, my, this wine is so rich. I've already finished my glass. No shame in having another, I suppose. Though, I hope you didn't feel anything untoward about her. Sure, she was young and lithe and pretty. All my servant girls are. But you're mine. And an emperor doesn't share his toys with servants any more than a lion shares his prey with jackals. If I caught you slinking off with one of those little tarts without my permission, you'd regret ever. But we need not worry about that. <laughs> we wouldn't have a dalliance with some servant and risk displeasing your emperor. You're my good girl. I know that sort of crass disloyalty is the furthest thing from your mind. Hmm. I have to personally express my thanks to the vineyard keeper. This wine is nothing short of sublime. And besides, even if you had a real connection with one of those girls, perhaps, if I were in an extraordinary generous mood, something could be arranged. I'd have to be present for your gatherings. That's absolutely essential. I won't permit that sort of thing without my involvement, but... Uh, what am I saying? <laughs> Forgive me. The wine has gone straight to my head. Ignore my drunken rambling. I, I don't know what wild place my wandering lips have dragged me off to. I do know where those wandering lips belong, though. <laughs> Here, let me serve you a little wine. I don't mean to hoard it all for myself. No, no. Put your hand back on your hip. You know very well you're told not to hold it yourself. You're so clumsy and you'd probably only spill it all over your clothes and humiliate yourself. And we wouldn't want that. <laughs> I'll hold your glass for you. Sit up. And let me raise it to your lips. There. Drink your fill. Let it warm your tired nerves. Finished. Would you like me to let you drink another glass? No. Alright. Oh, this night has been splendidly refreshing. I almost hate to rest so soon, but... Unfortunately, Imperial business awaits in the morning, and I require proper sleep. But another day will bring another night. We'll have plenty of time to spend with each other in the coming weeks. There are so many wonderful things I have in store for you, pet, but... I'm loath to spoil the surprise. For now, rest. Hmm. Nuzzle into me. Fall asleep in my arms. You are my perfect royal pet. Dream of me.